Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques from the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. When we have an infection, it's one of those mysteries that 10 different people may, may be infected by exactly the same virus or the same microbe, and they will have 10 different reactions. And uh, people have been trying to study this for the longest time. And there are sort of two things in play here, your body's innate um, reaction, the immune response, and, and the fine balance that it has got to maintain so that it does not just reject everything, but it will also maintain itself. You're right, everyone behaves differently to a virus. I dread flu season. Yeah. <laughs> An inappropriate or chronic detection of self-nucleic acids by the innate immune system is what underlies some of these human autoimmune diseases. Now, viruses, um, viral infections are predominantly detected by sensing of nucleic acids by the innate immune systems. And, you know, the way that viruses behave is rather interesting. You know, they, they integrate their DNA within the host genome and they start multiplying. They have evolved this amazing hijack system where they hijack the host cells and they dodge detection by the immune systems by hiding within those host cells. I mean, that's pretty... Th that is pretty, pretty cool. Amazing. And if you really think about it, the, the viral genomes are relatively complex. They have important reverse transcription genes that, that needs to be maintained. And then they create these repeat elements. And repeat elements are not only actually required through viral infections, but they accumulate over evolution. So these repeat microelements can really wreak havoc within the host genome because uh, your, your genome could, uh, or your um, immune system could actually see it as foreign. Exactly. So, you know, what you're, what you're telling me is I might have my grandparents. You know, repeat yeah, that is, that is a scary <laughs> thought. Of course. Uh, <laughs> so retro retrotransposons replicate through a copy and paste mechanism, inserting new copies of themselves into unique genomic locations. Um, and they've undergone several episodes of the substantial, uh, you know, multiplication. In, in mammals, uh, they constitute about 40% of the base content of the genome. I mean, that, that is, is astounding. Amazing. It, it's really difficult. It's every time I read that, I think that can't be right. <laughs> So in this review by Volkman and Stetson discusses the role of retro elements and autoimmune disease. They're looking at exactly this problem that we're describing. And they discuss how retro element cDNA can be sensed by our innate immune system and then in turn elicit an autoimmune response. Right. And, you know, like we mentioned, some of these autoimmune responses or, or some of these in responses by the innate immune system can lead to specific autoimmune diseases. And that's, that's what we're focusing on today. So as mentioned, around 40% of our DNA is comprised of repeat elements. It might seem that these retro elements could be a disadvantage. So fortunately, we have multiple mechanisms in place to restrict the movement of these elements, which I'm pretty happy about. You know, we have things like DNA methylation, chromatin modification, we have recruitment of various proteins, and then we also have post-transcriptional regulation for that matter. Yeah, the, the white tail study uh, looks at DICER, uh, which is really an important uh, enzyme that is involved in this RNA interference pathway, and it regulates gene expression. And to date, DICER has only been studied in the cytoplasm, but in this paper they uncover a role of DICER actually in the nucleus. And they use the, the RNA-seq and TRIP-seq to assess the DICER binding sites as well as uh, the gene regulation of DICER. It's, it's pretty exciting. I mean, what they find is that under normal conditions, it appears that DICER regulates gene expression through association with RNA polymerase II and double-stranded RNA. Now, DICER then co-transcriptionally cleaves the double-stranded RNA into small interference RNA, leading to recruitment of silencing or epigenetic markers. So a major role of nuclear DICER is to set up the right balance between heterochromatin and euchromatin, for that matter. Yeah, and you can imagine that if cells lack DICER, uh, things go really, really bad. And um, the endogenous double-stranded RNA accumulates within the nucleus, resulting in interferon induction and then subsequent cell death. This is the cell's last resort or the body's last resort to eliminate mis uh, misregulated cells that would otherwise lead to path pathogenesis or cancer. Very true. And, you know, we're still uncovering various ways in which these retro elements, as well as 
other overactive genes are silenced. And misregulation of these genes can lead to various diseases and elicit an, an immune response that could potentially lead to some immune autoimmune disorders, for that matter. Yes, that's true. But unfortunately, we're out of time today. Thank you so much for tuning into our show today. We feel, feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, concerns, any feedback. We love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Bye. Bye.